Hi guys, Rachel here. How is everyone? So I'm going to try to do like uh, an at present. I don't think it's even going to be too seasonal for October, really. Um, <laughs> what is the date? Is it the 15th? So we're like in the middle of the month. Um, I'm going to be talking about, or showing rather, decks I've been using. Maybe talk about some books that I've been working on and, and the like. Um, but I'm also going to talk about September, if anybody wants to hear about it. I just like to sort of document um, each month. Um, yeah, it's been, yeah, I just figured like, I don't know if I'm really ready for this video. I figured if I didn't do it now, it would be November. <laughs> and then I wouldn't be like doing the, the catch up. Um, just been sort of a hectic day, week, two weeks, really. Uh, Mark just got back from a gig in Cambridge and I feel so bad for him because he was attacked by allergies today and he just could not stop sneezing. It just wouldn't stop like all day long. And finally he was getting ready to leave for his gig. And I'm like, dude, <sighs> what are you going to do? <laughs> like, How are you going to play your saxophone? Um, cause it's a jazz gig and he's like, I don't know. I hope that it stops. I'm like, yeah, or maybe it'll be a new sound. You know, maybe you'll be like sneezing into your saxophone and everyone will be like, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> new sound. Um, I'm crazy. But anyway, yeah, I watched a movie with my daughter tonight after, um, after she finished her school project. Oh my God. She had like three different school projects she had to finish and they were group projects which are the worst they're the worst um because they need to talk to each other you know through their ipad and this and that and then of course they're distracted and then it's crunch time and oh i was trying to help her glue together um a model of a a cell um <laughs> an animal cell anyway so we watched um what would, what did we watch? Uh, Dracula's Daughter. It was part of some Dracula set that I bought her for Christmas last year. Anyway, let's try to get right into it. So September, um, what did I use for decks? Um, well, here's something new that I bought. Um, the new <laughs> Palladini. I got this when we were in Salem. Um, early September, before crowds started coming in. I actually, I love Palladini, and I just did not have this deck. Probably because I knew that it wasn't going anywhere, you know? It's really beautiful, and I was really enjoying this um, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we were in Salem, and um, we had a couple of nice beach days, I think, in September, but it was really tricky to predict what the weather was going to do. Um, the last time we were there, I was planning on a beach day, because every time that we canceled a beach day, because of... Uh, the rain that was supposed to happen, it always turned out that it never really happened. It would maybe mist for a little bit and then the sun would come back out. But this last beach trip that I planned, like we had fun, but <laughs> I'm lucky there were a lot of other fun things to do in town. That's the nice thing about going to the beach in Salem. Because no, it didn't work. We were there at the beach and I found some really nice sea glass, but... Um, it was misting, which didn't bother me too much, but I just got a feeling like we better go. And I'm glad that we went because shortly after we got in the car and we were driving back into town, into Salem, it started pouring. <laughs> and, you know, there was some lightning and it's not very safe to be at the beach. Um, but the previous visit was a lot of fun. Um, we we're writing some goofy poetry again. Like I, I've mentioned that I think in one of my other at present videos, um, we were going on about Italian gym, which I know 
doesn't make any sense. Jim Morrison. You guys know that I've been <laughs> listening to The Doors a lot and I don't know, I'm just completely immersed. Like, you know how I had my David Bowie synchronicity? Well, it's been a total Jim Morrison synchronicity and then some. It's been a source of all sorts of inspiration and all sorts of um, snippets of my old poetry has been being recalled when I'm doing tarot readings and stuff. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and it seemed quite prophetic. Um, I'm not going to get too into that because I don't want to share too much. But um, speaking of Palladini, I wanted to show you this. I was so excited about this. I found this on Etsy. Oh, it's a Scorpio plaque from the 70s, or this might be 1969. Um, and I know I'm not a Scorpio. It's not my sun sign, but I just loved this one. I thought about getting the Leo, but I decided to make a choice and I, I, I chose this. Um, Scorpio is my Mars <laughs> and my Saturn. Oh, but it's beautiful. I mean, maybe at some point, maybe someone will be selling the Leo again. I, I really did love the Leo, but I had to make a choice. Um, but yeah, and also I finally got a copy, like a, a vintage copy of the Aquarian. And this one is 1970. Really nice condition and it was not too expensive. So and these are the backs on this guy here. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's just keep talking. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me gather my thoughts here. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So the last beach trip that I planned was a little bit of a bust, but I do remember, um, uh, we had a nice time. Like we went and got some boba at this new place that we really like in town. And when we were driving out of Salem, it was daylight for once. Usually it's dark and the rain had stopped for the most part, but whoa, did it rain? Like the streets were really flooded and we just, all three of us sort of, I could feel it. We were, we were listening to the doors. It's like I've said before, like I hate driving, but when I listen to music that I really love, it actually makes it enjoyable for me. And I'm really, really familiar with the drive there and back. I really like it. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and we would be in the car listening to classic rock, um, driving to and from the lakes to go fishing with my family. But anyway, we were listening to, uh, it was a live version of The End, and we were driving through puddles and, like, giant puddles, and it was just, all three of us, it was like this, I don't know, this transcending sort of experience. We were all silent, and we were just listening, we were like, whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was... That was fun. Um, what else happened in September? Um, we got the house painted, the exterior, which is something that we really needed. <laughs> um, long overdue for that. And we went for something completely different. And it's really funky looking, cute. And I think I mentioned this in... Um, one of my videos, but I think it was random. I think it was my uh, my Shakespeare tarot video that I mentioned how before they painted the house, they power washed it. And I do remember saying to my boyfriend that I was a little worried about some of the things that were near the windows. I'm like, do you think any water might come in? You know, some of these windows are a little old, a little... Mm, and, you know, things aren't exactly like airtight and my boyfriend is the type who's like I'm not gonna stress about things I'm not gonna stress about it that's how he is <laughs> like whenever I try to be prepared he sees that as as stress as too much incoming so he's like no it's all gonna be fine so I listened to him and uh I was I remember I was sitting there on my bed and I was reading or something while they were power washing and they were right outside my window 
And remember how I've mentioned I have um, all sorts of books and decks on the floor on my side of the bed? And my boyfriend loves to refer to it as my cesspool library. <laughs> well, I'm glad I was there and still on the alert because sure enough, water started to come in and I heard it dripping and it was dripping on my books and my decks. And I, luckily I caught everything just in time. Nothing got ruined. Nothing was damaged. But whoa, did I have to run around like a chicken with its head cut off. And then I had to come into my art room and I had to, I pulled all the furniture away from the walls. The, the water was actually coming through, um, not just the windows, but, uh, the walls. <laughs> Nothing got damaged, but it was crazy. Um, but everything's good. And, uh, I should be showing decks. I was using, I was using the Hermetic too. Um, the house looks great. And the other funny thing that happened was, um, we still had our air conditioners in and my boyfriend had told the painters that, um, he was going to remove the air conditioners before they went to paint the trim around the windows. And, uh, but I don't know, he was just like busy with lots of negotiations and stuff with, with work and he never got around to it. And then I, I did say something to him about it and he's like, oh yeah. And he's like, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm like, okay, you know, but he never, he never ended up doing it. So the house was finished. They all left. And I think it took like actually a couple of weeks to get the house painted because of all of the rain. I'm sure most of you experienced a lot of rain. Um, we didn't have anything, uh, any, any scary flooding. I know it's been really bad for some people, but just a lot of rain. So it was really too wet to even go out like into the yard to pull the air conditioners out. You know what I mean? Um, because the air conditioner in our living room is gigantic and my boyfriend puts it like on a little, um, on a, what is it? A dolly and, uh, wheels it to the garage anyway pulled the air conditioner out and um <laughs> the window where the neighbors can see it like not that it matters but it is all sorts of uh screwed up looking so really funny it's just um it's really funny because my boyfriend was like whoops my bad my bad <laughs> you know <laughs> and you just kind of have to laugh about it because yeah it's totally uh it's totally something he would do. It's just kind of funny. So we have the paint in the basement. I love this deck, by the way. And um, we're going to have to, one day before it gets too cold, paint it ourselves. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I think we can do it. We painted some rooms in our house together, and it was fine. Um, Boschero was another one that I was using. Um, what are some other things that happened in September? So I think I mentioned this to my daughter. Her father, uh, moved. He moved to Florida. So, you know, she did fine. I felt bad for her. Um, but, uh, so far everything's been fine. Um, it's just quite a change, you know. And, uh, I won't talk anymore about that. Um... Y'all, try not to go on about this too much. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> I got the Edmund Dulock. This was another duck that I picked up when I was in Salem. Um, this was one that had been on my list for quite a while. And again, like I didn't get it because it's not going anywhere and I was trying not to accumulate too much. But it's um, one of those decks that was on my list for a long time and you don't buy it and you don't buy it. And then when you finally do, you're like, wow, like I can totally see why I wanted this deck. Um, yeah, it speaks to a younger version of myself or aspects of myself that need to be recalled you know like I was mentioning how you know snippets of my old poetry has been 
being recalled. And some of that is happening while I'm using this deck. And uh, a lot of that stuff that I was writing when I was in my early 20s, I wasn't, I wasn't even calling it poetry because I didn't know that it was. And I think I wrote better that way, just not thinking about it. Um, I would just sort of go into some sort of trance or something while listening to music and just write like stream of consciousness. And uh, it's been really wild. Um, and I've been doing that again. Not as much as I would like, but I've been, I've been doing that again. So this is really neat to... Um, I'm not going to talk about it at length, not to get too personal, but I remember to um, leave these cards at the top here. So I pulled these three cards one day, I think it was back in September, and I was just having a day where I could not concentrate because I kept getting, it was all sorts of incoming, you know, all normal stuff, nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault that I am the mothership and everyone comes to me, you know. Um, even the cat. <laughs> but um, I kept getting pulled away from my reading and I was getting frustrated because I just couldn't see anything. And then I came back to it and I was, I was listening to the end. Here we go again. I'm sorry if everybody's sick about hearing about the doors. But... I just started really listening to the music and as, as I was listening I really started seeing these cards and if you notice this is really neat um here six of cups there's a girl and it looks like you know she's about to get out of a boat at the pier and here there's an older girl getting into a boat and as I noticed that, right as I noticed that, I heard the words, the blue bus is calling us, if you guys know the, those lyrics from The End by The Doors. And I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I got my little, uh, my little notebook out and like wrote some stuff down immediately. Um but not to get too personal or anything, but um, I think Ray Manzarek had said um, about the blue bus in the song, The End, his take on it was, it was Jim's version of like the Egyptian solar boat, uh, the boat that pharaohs or anyone really would ride on throughout infinity. Um, anyway, so it was really cool. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just, um, it's just fun. Uh, uh, Jim had said more than once that every time he performs that song, you know, live, it, it always means something different to him. So everything's open to interpretation, which is really cool because you can't say it means this and um, someone's going to tell you that you're wrong because no, like, like Jim said, <laughs> it's open to interpretation. Um, but yeah, let's see. What else? Uh, does anybody know this deck, the Roman tarot? I had been looking at this for a while and probably what behooved me to finally get it was that I was reading I Claudius, you know, all the Romans. So that's fun. I really, really like this deck. If you're, um, a fan of, of Roman history, I really like the art and the cardstock is okay. It's fine. Um, it's not the greatest, but uh, this little self-published deck is only like mm, 20. Okay. So I'm sorry. I thought I knew it's between 20 and $30, which is not expensive if you ask me. <laughs> and um, I didn't buy the book for it. There is a little white book that explains things, but there is a larger book that I'm assuming probably gets more into um, the history, and you can find that, I believe, I believe on Amazon. Sorry, there's like some nudity in here. Um, yeah, I really like, I really like these paintings. Uh, it, it can be hard for me to find 
historical decks, like a historical setting like this, like the Romans or the Greeks, um, that I like. Because usually it just, they end up looking, I don't know, like a, a bit too modern for me. But I really dug this. So yeah, speaking of history, oh, I was having fun um, catching up with old friends. Like I was on the phone with two of my very best friends recently that I hadn't had the chance to talk with on the phone in actually years. It didn't seem like it'd been that long, but it had been that long. It'd been actually probably a couple of years since I'd talked to this friend. And um Oh, it was so refreshing. We ended up just like talking about history. <laughs> and we're on the phone talking about history and we're like laughing our asses off. But that's how our conversations always ran. Um, like my friend, uh, somehow we were talking about Napoleon and my girlfriend was telling me about this great book that she read on Napoleon. And I'm like, wait, I have a, I have a book, a giant book on Napoleon that I was really excited to buy, but I haven't read yet. And it might be that book. And she's like, oh, let me know what it is. I'm like, I'm going to go look right now. And I went to my shelf and I found it. And I'm like, dude, it's the same book. And she's like, dude, yes. And we were like so excited. We we're so silly. And then we were laughing and um, I said something about like, uh, when we're old and hopefully not senile, but if we are, are we going to get our lives confused with like the books that we read and stuff? <laughs> like, I'll be like, uh, Hey, remember when we were in the trenches and I was keeping your feet warm and she's like, yeah, cause I had trench foot. Right. Exactly. Or, um, we were talking about getting, um, history confused. Like, we were talking about Jim Morrison, of course, and Napoleon, and um, I said something about, like, uh, remember when Napoleon toured the United States and and he, he got brought up on charges for exposing himself in Miami, <laughs> like when Napoleon did that. But then it was funny because there was actually an interview that Jim was giving where he was talking about Napoleon. He was, like, in some... Uh, the Napoleon bar or something in, in um, New Orleans. And he was telling this interview about this mural about Napoleon exile, Napoleon in exile, that he couldn't get out of his head because he thought it was so beautiful. And, uh, and that happened after I was talking to her about it and she thought that was really funny, um, but cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it, I don't know, like the doors and Jim just, come up in our daily conversations like one of the things we've been saying lately is uh we've been calling one another my boyfriend and I we've been calling one another pharaoh it's pharaoh but there's this there's this live version of um what is it texas radio uh there's a live version where instead of pharaoh uh jim says this is the land where the pharaoh died <laughs> So I'll be doing something goofy and my boyfriend will be like, Rachel, what are you doing? And I'll be like, I'm a pharaoh. <laughs> like, it makes no sense. So anyway, sorry. Um, I got um, another copy of the Triumphi della Luna. This is um, an older version than the one I had. And I wanted it because it included the um, the Oracle cards, which don't come with the current edition of the deck. And it also includes the bonus tower cards, which the, the version that I had did not include. So I, everybody knows I love Triumphi della Luna. And so this is one of the decks that um, I've been using currently. I'm so sorry if I'm rambly. I'm sure some of you have switched this video off now because I won't, I won't shut up about random doors lyrics and stuff but if you want to know what's been up that's what's been up oh speaking of Jim so my my Dionysus finally arrived I, I love him it was really hard for me to find um a little statue that that didn't make me cringe and I I know I was talking to somebody about that and they had said the same thing but this came from Greece and it's oh it's beautiful um 
What else for ducks? This arrived some time ago from Make Playing Cards. Oh, I'm so sorry that I forget the creator, but I'm sure a lot of you know this one. It's so, it's beautiful. I love like these plasticky cards. It's so durable. And it's um, just a mini version of the Thoth. And by the way, I know I'm so weird. Um, if you watch some of my very first videos, I'm saying Thoth. And then at some point I start saying Thoth. And I'm not trying to be pretentious. It's just, I always used to pronounce it Thoth. And, but I, it's more common that I hear people pronounce it Thoth. So I always trip up on it. It's, and it's not just with Thoth or Thoth. There's other words that I vacillate on the pronunciations. I probably just overthink it, but I always like to say Thoth. And so I went back to that. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not one of those people who's going to say it's not Thoth or it's not Thoth or it's not Toth. It's just, it's whatever. Um, but yeah, just to explain myself. Isn't this beautiful? So, um, yeah, the colors are like uh, more saturated in this version. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. And I also really like how it's just a little tiny bottom border. And the color of that border varies depending on the card to suit it. And I just think it's so much fun. I want to edge it. There's a lot of decks that I want to edge. And I have not gotten around to doing any of that. And I keep telling myself that I'm that I'm going to. It's been forever since I've edged a deck. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, oh yeah, okay. The uh, another deck I've been using here and there is the Hoi Polloi. Um, yeah. So I know I said once. I'm not gonna. You know, it's not like a walkthrough or anything. I know I said that I probably was never going to get this, but um, I just love this era. I love it. I I have the Moon Baby, which really did do it for me, and I think it's a a beautiful representation of the Hoi Polloi. But I really was missing out on the darker tones, like jewel tones, whatever you want to call them, and this old English text that you don't have in the Moon Baby. Um... Uh, I just caved and I, I went for it like around, I don't remember when I did it. Like, I, I think I um, called it like a late birthday present to myself. Um, but it it's such a Rachel deck. It really is. I just love it. I Okay. What else? Um... What have I been using? What have I been using? I've been using... Oh, didn't I not bring it in here? Um, the Tarot Vampires. And I've been using the Vampire Tarot, of course. Um, I know I flipped through this entire deck in one of my videos. I don't remember which one it was. And I said some nice things about it. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to go on about it too much because it's such an awesome deck. And look, there's Lord Byron. Um, it's out of print and it shouldn't be out of print. I don't know why it is. Um, I recently got the Yonasa Yaus. Now, oh my gosh, I have been having, some... this has like been the only deck that I've wanted to use the past few weeks. I just can't believe how this reads for me. It was a deck that I'd wanted for a really long time because it just screamed out, this is a Rachel deck, this is a Rachel deck. And um, um, every time that I was able to buy it, it was always out of print. It was unavailable. I couldn't figure out how to get the deck. And a new version would come out. And I'd be like, oh, and I it was gone. So I just could not figure out how, how to get this deck. And it happened quite by accident um, through... Um, a shopping app that I use for some other things that it was recommended. The Yonasa Yaus shop was recommended. And I was like, what? 
And there it was. And I didn't even hesitate because I'm like, I better get it while I can. This is a deck that, by the way, I love the little write-up that she did for the cards. It's a Marseille-based deck. I'm sure most of you know that. I love the write-ups for the cards. I want to sit down and like read the whole thing. But with this deck, there's a handful of cards that I... Um, I just read in a completely new way when I'm when I'm using this deck, when I'm working with it. I have a special relationship with the King of Cups, and I'm not going to say why. Uh, it's just too personal. And the King of Cups was uh, one of the cards, the, one of the first cards years ago that I sort of had like a kind of a negative association with because something about it, I don't know why, at the time I didn't know anything about tarot. I was really only using the deck to loosen up my inhibitions. There it is. I was trying to get back into my art, into my visual art and my writing. But from time to time, I would I would shuffle them and, you know, see what card I would get. And I, whenever I got the King of Cups, I had this uh, aversion to it. And it's because it reminded me of my husband. And I, I wasn't sure why. But what's funny that I found out years later when I was studying like astrology and stuff, it just so happens that my ex-husband, yeah, you guessed it. He is the king of cups based on his, his birthday. So that's weird. But that's not what I get from this at all. It's somebody else that I see who I know that he was not a king of cups. But um, and he, it's, like, it's a stalker card. And I just read it in a completely different way than I would normally read King of Cups. And um, no, I, I, uh, I, love the, I love the King of Cups. I've come to appreciate him. But in the beginning, he was a, a, a sort of like a cringe card for me. So um, I don't know. I've talked about September. October has just been like, what have I done in October? Um, um, oh, yeah, I also got, I should show a deck while I'm talking. I'll try to wrap this up soon. The Stunning Tarot. By the way, I got the both of them together. It was uh, quite a deal if you got them both together. The latest edition of the Stunning Tarot. It's stunning. Um, yeah, I went to I went to a haunted house last week, so that's probably the most seasonal kind of thing that I've done. I haven't done really any rituals or anything. Um, but I went to a haunted house because I thought it would be fun for my daughter. Now, I've said, or maybe I haven't said before, maybe I've only said it in conversation with some of you, like privately, that I'm reluctant to really um, go and spend money on any sort of fall activities because I personally just see it as a racket because most things are overpriced. You have to wait in line for a really long time. And the parking and, ooh, no, thank you. Um, but I did this. Um... I did this because somebody else was driving, you know, some friends of ours, and we had fun. We did. But I mean, it was like over $70 for the two of us, like the price of like my daughter and I to get in. And <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Um, it's actually much more cost effective if you want to do something festive to go into Salem because... There's all sorts of street bazaars and stuff that go on when you're there and they don't cost admission price. I mean, if you're going to go into like a haunted museum or something, it does. Um, I don't mind museum admission prices. But the problem with Salem this time of year is that you can't get in. Um, I never go in October. I did go trick-or-treating in Salem last year because, again, I wasn't driving. But um, they had blocked off the city with... Um, some military vehicles because you couldn't get in and out by car. You had to take the train in. So that's that's how we did it. But um, yeah, I tend not to go in October because when I was there in September, I mean, it was like early to mid-September and there were already quite a few people there and you could tell they were from out of town and they were, I mean, it was really warm out and they were wearing like pumpkin colored sweaters and stuff. And you know what? No, it's fine. It's fine but I could tell I was like oh my god this is gonna this is gonna start like even earlier this is gonna start even earlier I think it's it's social media you know so it's just it's impossible to get um to get in 
and to park. So anyway, Haunted House was fun, but um, this weekend was low key and I was very happy to just sit with some cider donuts with my daughter and watch, you know, some vampire movies. That's what I like to do. We haven't bought a pumpkin yet. Um, we tend to just like to buy the little guys because they last longer. They don't rot as quickly. And my daughter likes to buy a few. And then we like to draw on them instead, like paint on them instead of carve. Uh, that's just our style. So I'll just briefly mention a few books. I don't really want to make this too long. So I mentioned this in the Gothlet November, if you guys saw that. This is not going to be a TBR for that. There will be a separate video for that at some point. I know Bailey's going to do one too. But I started reading Conjure Wife. This was the one that I wasn't sure if this is goth or if it's more horror. So I'm, I'm reading it. I'm halfway through it. I'd say it's kind of, kind of gothic. It's really good. Um, it's fun. It's funny. And you know what? It, it, it actually is. Um, I don't know why, why I'm stuttering. It actually is kind of creepy. Um, Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. I'm reading this, but I honestly, I've not picked this up in like a couple of weeks because I've been too busy and I forgot to bring it in here, but I finished reading I, Claudius. So uh, most nights I was just, you know, trying to get through the rest of that. Loved it. Um, if you like Roman history, it's um, it's good. What can I say? I finished uh, this little book. Um, I mentioned this in my last video. Some of Jim Morrison's unpublished poetry because he had poetry that he wrote that he self-published during his lifetime. But this was some unpublished stuff. Um, and even though I finished it, I'm still kind of like picking it up at night and oh, just having such a wonderful time with that. I read um, The Guide to the Tarot of the Greek Magical Papyri. This was a deck that I was using in September and still in October, but I decided not to bring it out because I think that I flipped through most of that deck in my last um, at present. This is fun. I like how he... Um, includes some of the spells from the Greek magical papyri. Um, and I mean, some of this stuff, you're obviously not going to want to partake in because it includes an the, the use of animals, but he kind of gives, um, I mean, of course they did, but <laughs> he gives um, alternatives to that. And speaking of that, I'm still reading this which, you know, this is based on the Greek magical papyri. And it's quite, uh, some of some of the spells are quite beautiful to read, actually. If you just sort of get into the flow of the words, uh, it's sort of musical. And that's kind of nice to read at night. But I haven't picked that up in like a week or so either. This biography on Jim Morrison is much better personally than the one that I read last month or the month before. Um, I think I mentioned about that though. I think I talked about the comparison of those two books already. But if I've been talking to you in person and we've been talking about this, this is the one that I'm reading Break On Through. And I mean, look at, look at, look at all of this that I've all, <laughs> look at all these, these tabs in here. This is insane. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to talk too much about that because I am sure that I will talk about that again at some point. And I'm also reading some Byron, which I think I mentioned that in my Gothlet November. There's there's a couple of other books, but I didn't bring them in here because uh, I don't know where I left them. Um, but yeah, what else? Um, yeah, like I said, I just felt like I should do this just to catch up with you guys and say hi because uh, I felt like if I didn't do it now... I wouldn't get around to it. And I'm sorry if I was really rambly and not making much sense, but my goal is to not edit this at all because when I go to edit my videos, it is such a bitch to try to upload it from my editing app. It's a pain and I don't feel like dealing with it. I just want to I just want to upload this. <laughs> so so yeah, uh, I hope I wasn't too scatterbrained and rambly, but hi everyone. Just wanted to say hi. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.